Good evening. You're watching S3 TV News. Coming up, we visit a soup kitchen helping to feed the hungry in Hull. We visit the big screen as it comes to life in Immingham with news of the cinema there. And I'll be talking to Councillor Brian Duke about that cinema there in Immingham. Welcome to SG TV News. I'm Hugh Richards. First of all, it's over to Richard Morris for the news headlines. Hello there. Humberside Police and Crime Commissioner Matthew Grove says he prefers using tasers over other forms of enforcement, including batons and armed officers. National figures released today under a Freedom of Information request show that Humberside Police use tasers against under-18s more than any other force across the whole country. I do really like access to taser by officers. I think it's an important tactic that actually very often minimises situations and prevents more dangerous uh, tactics being use, used. Very often the alternative would be the use of firearms, which is lethal force, or the use of quite aggressive tactics such as batons uh, to, to strike people with. Residents in North East Lincolnshire have been viewing the draft local plan at consultation. Yesterday the plans were on display at Freshney Place for the public to look at and ask questions. Councillor David Watson, portfolio holder for the Environment and Housing, outlined what people's main concerns were so far and how people should get involved. I think the concern is about the infrastructure. If a new uh, housing site is being developed, uh, they're concerned are the number of houses, are the number of schools going to be right, uh, is the general infrastructure, but that's all part of the local plan. It's important that the public are fully engaged with the consultation process within the local plan because it is their local plan for the next 10 or 15 years. In the North Lincolnshire Council area, council tax will be frozen for the fifth year in a row. The decision was made at a budget meeting last night. The St Andrews Hospice Shop and Drop in Grimsby was officially opened last night. The shop, located on the old Blockbuster site in the town, was opened by the new St Andrews Hospice Ambassador Joanne Clifton from Strictly Come Dancing. She also donated a pair of her dancing shoes to the charity. I'm extremely proud to be here and extremely honoured that I've been invited to open it. Um, it's something very close to the heart of my parents. They've always supported, through Clifton Dance Academy, they've always supported the St Andrew's Hospice. And now I came back to England to do Strictly, obviously, because I used to live in Italy. And I thought, well, now I'm back in England, I'm going to support them as well. That's all from me, and I'll be back with more news soon. Bye for now. If you live in Immingham and want to check out the latest film offering, you'll no doubt head for Cleethorpes. But did you know that the town civic centre hosts its very own showings of some of the latest films? The Community Cinema, based on the corner of Pelham Road and Washdyke Lane, is run by a team of volunteers and can prove to be popular. But numbers have begun to dwindle and it's now at risk of closure. Dan Kemp has the popcorn. If you want to watch The Imitation Game or Maleficent, for example, well, and just miss them at the cinema, the then there's still another chance to catch them by heading to Studio One at Immingham Civic Centre. But this may be not the case for much longer, as it may be forced to shut without more support from the local community. It's a service that we put on in the holidays for the, you know, for the kids, really. I mean, there's not a lot for them to do around here in, in Immingham, you know, and uh, I think it's a great, it's a great thing. It's only a pound costs next to nothing to come in. It's a, we, we do refreshments cheaper than what the shops are. So um, I think it's brilliant, you know, and I, I, it's a pity more people don't support us. It is a useful facility. We like coming because it is a cheap activity for the kids to do in the school holidays. They enjoy um, watching the films because it's usually a film that's not been long out and they get to you can see one around and do their own thing in the break time. So it's not as formal as going to the cinema. But parents are fearful. If the volunteer-run cinema fails to continue, they'll see another potential activity taken away from the families of North East Lincolnshire. Um, well, there wouldn't really be a lot to do from in the school holidays, especially for the smaller children. The kids can go and do their own thing, but when it's sort of like adult supervised things, there's pretty much here and can to the library and we haven't got the swim pool anymore now, so it would be a great shame for the kids to miss out on doing this. We obviously rely on the amount of people that come through, uh, and um, we've, we've had... We've had quite a few where we've had not, not very many people at all. So everything depends on how many we get in. I mean, today is brilliant. 
we've had quite a few, and mainly due to the uh, Eastfield School, you know, the uh, Children's Centre at Eastfield School. They promote us very well, uh, and that's why we've got so many in today. You're watching S3 TV News. A little later in this programme, James Dunn will be here with the uh, order papers from our local legislatures, and Dan Kemp will bring you all the sports news. Councillor Brian Duke joins me now to talk about that cinema in Immingham. Brian, thank you very much for coming in. You're welcome. How long has the, the uh, cinema been going? About six years, probably 2009 it started when we had a survey of uh, people in Immingham and asked them particularly what they would like to see in Immingham. And one of the things was a cinema. And when, when was the last a commercial cinema, as it were? Uh, you know, an Odeon or a, or a picture palais? In, 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 in Immingham, yeah. Goodness gracious, I think you're going back to uh, just after the war, I think. Right, <laughs> as so long, some as long ago as that. It's yeah. been, been some time. Yes, yeah. It's run by volunteers. Yes. Uh, is, that, is that a sort of uh, film buffs who come together who, who want to put this uh, organisation together or is it just people who, who happen to be available? It's just people who happen to be available, but we are, but we are members of the One Voice Community Group and that we run the Studio One Cinema as a separate uh, entity and we meet together and try and decide on which films we're going to, to show and try and get the latest of course and uh, well i was going to come on to the, what, what it is that you show but just first of all the uh, the matter of the venue you've recently moved i think yes that's right uh, we were down at image studios which was down at the bottom of margaret street at the resource center and then that was due for closure north east links council decided to close it so the museum moved the cinema moved it both to the civic center and uh, we've been there ever since been there about Two, three years, I think. I mean, that, that's a good home, is it? In fact, it is. in some ways yeah. it's easier to get to, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's more central, and that, that is one good thing. Uh, and what happened to the resource centre that they were going to close down? Well, would you believe it's still open? Right. <laughs> OK. So we maybe shouldn't have moved, but we, you never know. Uh, there's, a, well, there's, a, there's, a, there's another issue there, perhaps. Yes. Now, the films you show, uh, are, you've brought along a programme for the, for the upcoming films, and I'll just give a, a quick taste of what's coming up. Uh, Madagascar 3, How to Train Your Dragon, uh, The Penguins of Madagascar, Awful lot of Madagascar on there. Oh, that's right. Those are children's matinees, of course. Uh, and in the evenings, the Grand Budapest Hotel, Before I Go to Sleep, The Imitation Game, which, of course, almost got an Oscar the other day, it did. Uh, Maleficent and, and The Jersey Boys. They're very up-to-date films, aren't you? You're, showing, you're competing with uh, uh, the, the big cinema chains, really. Well, we are, but uh, maybe we are competing with price as well because our price is uh, a lot less than the normal cinema chain. And that what is it that you don't get, the, the Hollywood studios don't send you the, the films immediately on release? No. You have to wait no, a little No, we while. have to wait until it's released on DVD, unfortunately. And sometimes we can plan something in, and then the release date probably is, uh, is dropped back, and we have then to uh, think again. Everybody else will take this completely for granted, but to me the technology is astonishing. You can put a DVD disc into a machine, and somehow, rather than coming up on television, that's projected an old-fashioned projector onto a big cinema screen. Yes, yes. I won't call the projector old-fashioned, but uh, oh. it is a projector, um, a digital one, and uh, yes, it's, it's uh, projected onto a big screen. And so that means that you have that full cinema experience. Yes, we it? have the surround sound cinema, cinema sound as well. Because that's that, I mean, cause the alternative, if it's available on DVD, DVD, then you can just sit at home and put your you feet up and watch it, it just then. It just isn't the same. You don't get the same atmosphere. It's a social atmosphere as well. And um, you, as I say, you get the surround sound, which makes a big difference. And, and it's and it, there's just something, it's a special occasion, isn't it? it? Is. Going to the cinema, that's sitting right, at home yeah. and watching a movie, that's a wet Sunday afternoon, but it's, yeah. a, it's a special event going on. And you meet, you meet other people, of course, yes. And then we do have a, an interval where you can have a coffee or a tea or ice cream or uh, some sort of um, sweets. Each other. Do you have young women walking around with a tray around their necks selling truck houses? Well, I think that's something we might have to consider. It might be a good idea. It, uh, it, might, it might attract uh, people in. It is part yeah. of the... Well, well, you should do it yourself, <laughs> Brian. It is part of the oh cinema yeah. experience, isn't it? <laughs> with the torch as well. Uh, with the torch, exactly, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, God, we're old, aren't we? No, we do we remember we the are, old days, yes. don't we? <laughs> um, why is it that you're, you're showing um, the, these very up-to-date films, of course, but is there not a possibility here they're all th to have that big, s big screen, silver screen experience and watch some of our favourite old classics. I'd want to go, I'd come to Immingham to watch Casablanca or Citizen Kane or, or, or no, to have and have not. No. Well, it is something that we, we've, we've considered. The, the biggest problem that we have is, uh, is the cost, of course. For, for every screening, we have to pay a licence fee. 
and that's uh, and we we're going to talk about talking about the technology, but that license fee is a, f a copyright fee effectively it is, that you pay right, to. Yes. Yeah, I mean, what do you do? You write a month every week to we, we the Golden Mayor. No, we we pay to um, a, an organisation called Film Bank, and they have the authority to issue licenses on behalf of the the filmmakers. And there are two ways you could buy those licenses. There are one is a single screening license, which is uh, paid for every time you screen a film, and it it costs us one hundred pounds. And or you can have a cinema club where you pay a, an annual fee, but you can't advertise and you can't charge for admission. So we, it's a bit, bit complicated, really. And you have to charge for admission. We have to, you yes. You yes. Otherwise, we won't we won't be sustaining it. You have to raise mm. that money. Mm. And what are the costs? Do you have to pay for the venue as well? No, fortunately not. They, we are very lucky there. The, ca the town council joined in with us to move the cinema to the civic centre, and ever since then we've had the whole uh, for nothing really. And uh, what do you charge? We charge three pounds for adults on an evening, uh, when the evening screenings are on, or three pounds. Sorry, three pounds for everyone, really. And then when on the matinees, it's two pound for adults and a pound for accompanied children. That's a lot cheaper. It is than you'll find in most cinemas. Yes, and you can buy refreshments. We don't have popcorn, unfortunately, but because it does make a bit of a mess. I was talking about popcorn in a poetic <laughs> sense, <laughs> it was a, a trope of the of the cinema trade. Yeah. Uh, and you show a film just just once a month, then. Once, once every month for uh, the evening screenings, and then during the school holidays we try to do the matinees. Could you not be doing it a bit more often, maybe? Well, we probably could do it more often. Um, obviously, we've got to have the, the, the venue available. We've got to have the volunteers available. And at the moment, we, we know that every, I think it's the third Thursday, um, everybody's available to come. There was some uh, lottery funding at the there beginning. There was, in, in, the ve in the very beginning, that's right. We obtained lottery funding and some from LIDA as well to uh, buy Sorry. the screen. LIDA? LIDA, that's uh, another funding right. point. Uh, to buy the screen, to buy the projector, to buy the DVD player and the, uh, the, the amplifier. And uh, they set us up at, uh, Imming, uh, at the Image Studios. And what you need now uh, in order to secure this fantastic service that you're offering is, is you just need more people to come because you yep. need more more bums on That's seats right. and more, more, bums on more, seats, more, yes. more tickets yes. sold. Yes, I mean we, if we if we uh, have uh, 30 people that would be very very good that gives us 90 pound uh, and then we make up the rest perhaps on refreshments and a raffle. And how can you get more people there? Well I don't know that's very difficult isn't it just by advertising publicity that's all we can do really. Uh, it's uh, one of those things because if it's I mean cinema is Everybody thought when DVDs and uh, before that VHS tapes were coming out that uh, you know cinema was dead, uh, but everybody thought radio was dead when mm. they invented television. Mm. Uh, mm. But it hasn't; it survived. But it's not as easy to get to a cinema as once it was uh, in, in on the south bank of the of the Humber. Then cinemas in Scunthorpe, great big cinema complex in Keythorpes. Um, why is it that people uh, don't want to support a, a cinema so much closer to home? Well, surprisingly. I think it's because they say they didn't know there was a cinema. Now we've been going all this time and there are, there are posters in the library, posters elsewhere. Um, we sell tickets from the library. Um, I just don't understand why they don't know there's a cinema. Well, as a film buff, I hope that uh, everybody watching SG TV now does. I, I hope, hope they do as well. Yes. The I do hope they'll come along as well. We'll come yes. and help you, I certainly will. Brian, thank you very much for coming in today and good luck with that yep, project. Very welcome, thank you. Benefit sanctions in Hull have been under the spotlight recently after a charity said they were pushing the most vulnerable people further into poverty. Sanctions are imposed on those who don't meet the criteria for receiving certain benefits. For example, not turning up for an appointment at the job centre if you're on job seekers allowance. But the Warren in Hull claims this results in food poverty, homelessness and desperation, based on data from its counselling service. And it's why more and more people are relying on a soup kitchen in Hull's old town. James Dunn went to find out more. What better place to feed the needy than here at Hull's St Mary's Church, which has been a place of refuge since the 14th century. But today's problem is a modern one. This soup kitchen's needed because of sanctions to benefits that have left many people in a desperate state. Uh, a lot of people who are on sanctions uh, from the job centre. Um, we're also waiting for letters to get a card to go to food banks. So we thought we'd set up a different type of food bank where you don't need referral letters, where if you are in the middle of a sanction, 
um, there's food available for you, otherwise there's just no money. Some people's money have been stopped for 13 weeks. And how do they survive? For many, a simple meal can save them from going down the road of drugs or criminality. When people get desperate, they end up like going into shops, feeding things from shops, selling them to selling them to other people for half the price. Then they can either go get the fix off for alcohol or fix for drugs. But for some, it's more than just food. Lee became suicidal after the breakup of a long and difficult relationship. But the soup kitchen has helped him get his life back on track, and now he helps out as a volunteer. Uh, I wanted to help because I wanted to show my appreciation because of people who was homeless, and I wanted to help the staff out here as well. There's people that's got problems, uh, do you know what I mean? You know, mentally, physically. Uh, and you know, depression, anxiety, there's a lot of people what suffering at the moment, do you know what I mean? So We've been back on the streets with another lexicographical conundrum. It's what you say. It's silent, it's raining. It's raining. Oh there you go. Raining fast, Dad. It's chucking it down. It's raining fast. Uh, it's raining hard. Um, it's, it's, it's raining cats and dogs. Rain. Siren it down means it's absolutely belting it down with rain. Raining. It's raining. raining. Pouring. Pis persisting down. <laughs> Being polite. Raining. Being down. Raining. Silent down. Yeah, I've been chucking it down the road. Uh, James Dunn is here to update us on what we might find going on in the local council chambers this week. James. Well, it is the biggest week of the year for local councils. It's the budget setting week. So this is where councils will decide where your money is spent, uh, which areas and where we'll see cuts. Now, the universal theme will be cuts because, of course, local council budgets are being cut from central government. So they will have to make savings, but where they find these savings is actually quite political. Uh, it's very interesting, actually. So yesterday we had North Lincolnshire Council, which is a conservative council. Uh, it's a conservative Lib Dem coalition government, of course. They've frozen council tax for the fifth year in a row, despite cuts to their budget. So obviously they've chosen to sort of take them on the chin. And, uh, and reduce certain services, although they claim to have protected frontline services. Now, East Riding will be setting theirs today. They're a Conservative-led council. Um, they do plan on uh, raising their council tax by nearly 2%, as do Hull and North East Lincolnshire Council, which are Labour-run councils who will decide tomorrow. Now, to give you an idea of how much information there is to get through here, Hull's council meeting is 10 till 6 tomorrow, so that is an absolute marathon for anyone. An eight-hour debate. Yes. <laughs> so, well. you know, for anyone interested in uh, in going to that, you know, that 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 that's what you've got bring, to look bring, forward bring, to. Bring a picnic, I think. Mm. But what was really interesting, actually, is it, when I say it's political. If you actually look at the wording in their budget report, I'm just going to read this out to you. And this it's, is uh, Hull City. This is from Hull City Councils. Yeah. And in two years, this council has had its government grant funding reduced by an eye-watering £41 million. Not just £41 million, an eye-watering £41 yeah, million. Well, <laughs> it always hurts, doesn't uh, it? Yes, uh, this equates to 10p in every pound in grant funding for 2014 and 15, and a further 15p reduction for 2015 and 16. This is interesting. Hull is ranked as the 10th most deprived authority area in England out of 326 authorities. Now, it says research shows that between 10 to 2010 and 2011 to 2015 and 2016, over a five-year period, that is, um, that will amount to £278.94 per head of the population. Now, comparatively, East Riding, which is the 130th most affluent, so that's very mid-range and more wealthy than Hull, yes. um, they've received only an £89.69 cut per head. Now, the reason I say that's quite political, actually, is because if you look on East Riding's website, which I obviously have. Right. Um, we have graphics here, right? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 there's a graph, a useful graph, which will tell you how much each authority gets per head. Now, 
What that statement missed out is that in Hull, and this was in 2013 to 2014, so last year, or already after quite a number of uh, cuts. In 20 seconds, James. Um, well, they, Hull received around £800, whereas in East Riding it was around £400. So although the cut is greater, so is the, uh, is the amount they get. And over the time, I think, with a Tory uh, Lib Dem coalition, we'll see that level out. James, thank you very much. Fascinating analysis there. Thank you, James. Here is Dan Kemp with all the sport. Three of our local football sides were in action last night. Scunthorpe United were at home against Barnsley in League One. The Iron were defeated by one goal to nil, whilst Grimsby Town were in action at Brundle Park in the Vanarama Conference. They secured a 1-0 victory against bottom club AFC Telford through a Nathan Arnold strike. Finally, North Ferriby United were at home against Hennesford Town in the Conference North and were defeated 2-0 in their final game ahead of the FA Trophy second leg on Saturday. In Rugby Union, Hull Ionians demolished the Leicester Lions 53-0 in National League 2 North. Joe Makin opened up with the first of his two tries to kick off the route, and Sam Wilson also went over twice, scoring the second of the game's eight. Adam Thomas finished off the scoring with this try two minutes from the close. The Eyes remain in second place, but play their game in hand against the league's bottom side next week. Elsewhere in the division, Hull IUFC made it back-to-back -back wins to move clear of the relegation zone, beating Otley 30 points to 18, and in Midlands 3, Scunthorpe beat the Peterborough Lions 20-13. Hull KR's academy team is going to be in action again this weekend. Both the teams are in action with the under-19 side facing off against Cumbria at Brantingham Park. The team will be looking to build on their seven-try victory over the Castleford Tigers last weekend. The under-16 side will be travelling to Stanningley RLFC on Saturday to face off against the Leeds Rhinos youth team. That's all for the sport for now. If you've got any sports stories that you want to share with us, you can do so by emailing, contacting us on Twitter at Estuary TV, or by searching for us on Facebook. You can also do so by calling 01472 31653. Thanks very much, Dan. Just time before we go to get another couple of insights from James. Uh, it's worth, uh, as you said, it's the biggest day of the year in yes. terms of making budgets and the most political. And of course, we mustn't forget that it's only a couple of months until the local elections. Of course, that's May the 30th. So uh, I suppose that's when things will will really, really change potentially, because if we do see a Labour government, then uh, I think maybe councils might expect to see less cuts in the budget, but I think they may be sorely disappointed. They'll be disappointed because the Labour government will have as much debt as anybody else does. Indeed. James, thank you for that. That's all we have time for now. If you have a story for us, please go to Facebook or Twitter pages, details on the screen, email me at TV or call Grimsby 31553. Until tomorrow, good evening. Hello and welcome to Estuary TV's weather. A mild start with rain clearing by mid-morning. On Thursday to leave a chilly and breezy day with sunny intervals and a few blustery showers. Likely to be wintry over the Pennines and a maximum temperature of 6 degrees. Windy and chilly on Friday with scattered showers and perhaps wintry on hills.